Hey everybody, I hope you're doing absolutely amazing. Today we're talking Neo Day. We're going to talk about what happened in Neo Day in a quick consolidated video here, which is my goal to get you guys up to speed as quickly as possible. If you don't know what Neo Day is, Neo Day is a day where Neo hosts for their owners, their community, and typically shows off new products and upcoming technologies. And this year was nothing like the, well, it was similar to other years. We had essentially the ET5 come out. It was essentially the climax of the event. And I'm going to talk about that first in this video, and then we'll make our way to, I think, the other things that they unveiled. But first, if this is your first time watching my channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Rodrigo, and I go through content like EVs, and I talk finance, and that's pretty much what I do. So I hope you get some value out of this video, because I did make this for you guys. Uh, if you guys did enjoy this video, maybe a like, maybe a subscribe. There'll be more content coming your way. All right, so first things up, we need to talk about this ET5, which is essentially their new sedan that was just unveiled. So the ET5 is set to be different than their ET7, which is their flagship sedan. We still don't have ET7s out, but the ET5 is supposed to be a more cost-effective car to compete against the ET7. And I really liked what they unveiled, so let's take a quick look. Ignite the senses. So this is what they're calling their ignite the senses they really kind of want to spark the attention i really like the styling of the et5 so when i'm taking a look at this and the curvatures and the shape and how the car's aesthetic looks it looks amazing the front reminds me a little bit of a shark a little shark face and i think yeah, lee also did say that in the neo day coverage so here are some of the key facts that i was able to extract from neo day just to kind of share with you guys right here, very high level. So essentially, there's gonna be a couple of different options for this. So a 75 kilowatt battery, a 100 or their 150, but there wasn't any pricing yet confirmed for the 150. So for their 75 kilowatt battery, starting price is around 52K USD. And if you do get their battery as a service, you can get that for as cheap as 40K USD and then you have to pay a monthly fee of $156 a month. But with that, you get a range of 550 kilometers or 340 miles, so not too bad. And then you can also upgrade to their 100 kilowatt battery. So this one's gonna get you 435 miles. So you're getting about an extra 100 miles versus their other 75 kilowatt offering. You're still gonna pay for this one a little bit more. So if you get their battery, it's 61K USD. If you get their battery as a service, you're gonna pay 40K USD exactly like their 75 kilowatt offering. Uh, the only difference is your monthly payment for that service, for their battery as a service, is gonna be 235 bucks a month. So you're pretty much getting an extra 80 bucks a month cost for an extra additional 100 miles. Uh, it depends what type of driver you are. It could be beneficial. And uh, yeah, there was no pricing specified for their 150 kilowatt battery. There wasn't really any details on it. But what we do know is that they did say that you could achieve up to 1,000 kilometers on it or the equivalent of about 620 miles. So that one looks really cool. So I'm excited to hear what they have to say about that. Um, so a couple of other things that they did say was... Um, expect that if you do buy an ET5, you get 10 year unlimited warranty uh, with lifetime free power swap and free power home. So they're kind of throwing these a little additional perks. The ET5 is also going to be powered with what they're calling their Aquila Super Sensing and their Super Computing, which is powered by NVIDIA. So we'll take a quick look at that. But so they're NAD, which is Neo Autonomous Driving, is essentially powered by those functions. Their Aquila is what they're essentially saying, has 33 high performance sensing units, ultra long range, high resolution LiDAR. They essentially have eight megapixels, high resolution cameras for a total of 11 of them to enhance the driving system, 12 ultrasonic sensors, high precision localization units, and this is all going to help power this autonomous uh, computing system. So here's what they're showing as well too, that the ability to see out further is substantially increased with this Aquila system that they have. 
So it's going to be much better uh, in kind of anticipating things on the road. And then let me just go a little bit further down. I just want to show you guys the NVIDIA where essentially Neo is calling out that they're using some NVIDIA chips. So right here, you can see the NVIDIA components. They're using them in their master cores for computing essentially all of uh, the calculations from the sensors that are happening. And then, you know, just to kind of close off a little bit on the picture too for the ET5, I think it looks great inside out. This is a preview of what they put on their website of how it looks like on the inside. So you can see the ambient lighting. It looks phenomenal. I think the aesthetics, their NAMI. Um, overall, a really nicely looking car, especially for the price. And they did start taking pre-orders as of today, as soon as the NEO event did go through. So I'd be really curious to know actually how many orders are probably already in. I don't know if there's a way to find that, but that would be really cool to, to, to know. Um, in terms of other news, so they did call out a couple yeah, of things. So with their international expansion, uh, I'll let kind of Lee do the talking here. So you made a couple of things here to say that their expansion into Norway is progressing nicely. They're also planning to go into Denmark, Sweden, Netherlands, and Germany. And then with the expectation to have 25 plus countries by 2025. So that's a pretty great way to at least give us some perspective of what the long term trajectory is. Um, so I did enjoy that. In addition to that, if we skip ahead a little bit more, they go ahead and talk about their power swap stations. So they call out that this year to date, we have built about 733 swap stations. And they're calling out essentially that, hey, we have this partnership too with Shell that's going to help us build that infrastructure for our long-term growth vision, which is also pretty cool. And lastly, the next thing to, that did happen, well, two more things. One, they also called out too that as of today, nearly 10,000 users have enjoyed battery upgrades, which is pretty cool. And then lastly, they also talked about their ET7 and their ET7 comes out just to say that we're adding a couple more features uh, in terms of comfort and smart features. So overall, it was a very condensed, but I think to the point Neo day, if I just was to reiterate everything and conclude, we had the reveal of the ET5, which is essentially going to be their midsize sedan to compete in terms of a more competitive pricing space. We essentially had their expansion growths, uh, giving us a little bit more about what their trajectory looks like. We had a little bit more about their power swap system, essentially, and then some specifics about their ET7. So overall, of everything they've announced, I think their international expansion and their ET5 looks the coolest to me. Um, I would love to have known a little bit more about what they're anticipating for productions and what their forecasts look like for the ET5 because I think that would be really cool to know. But I think that will come in the future. But Overall, I thought it was a pretty good Neo day and I hope you guys got some value out of this because it's a very condensed to the point what happened on Neo day.